what would be your reaction when you came across this word follow? I'm sure you are so familiar with the word follow. Ano yung naiisip nyo when, when you encounter this word follow? All of us should agree. In our personal matter, when we say following, it's about social media, it's about blog, it's about connection. Ano? Meron ng mga blogger dito. <laughs> I'm sure we're following some of the blogger, no? And sometimes we feel envious. Ah, uy, can you like, like? Para magkaroon din ako ng maraming connection. <laughs> it comes to follow. This is our nature, my own, our own personal nature, I believe. You know, most of the company today, they are making or enforcing the employee to have or to follow procedural discipline. Why? Because most of us, I think most of the employees today have this tendency to deviate. Instead of following, we deviate into the process. Next one, non-compliance. Most of the company there, we have this compliance officer to make sure that all of us will follow. But instead, our character, <laughs> just imagine when you are driving, you, we always want to do shortcut. Instead of following, no, no, there's a shortcut there. Mas mabilis doon. Siguro ganun, ganun ang ginagawa natin. No? Instead of following, when you see this word, that means somebody still not following, even with the big sign of no entry. <laughs> what is your thought? Jaywalking. Mamaya pong hapon, <laughs> let's look doon sa street natin. May mga billboards na malaki, tao, jaywalking. But as if you never see that billboard, jaywalking, and then you just cross. Why is it so hard for us to follow, to consistently follow? What is your reflections about following? Now, when it comes to spiritual discipline, or when it comes to following the Lord Jesus Christ, it denotes many characters. It denotes dedication, devotion, perseverance, consistency. It denotes priority. I think we should learn in our conversation today the priority and focus, the devotion and the consistency of life. I just, just try to imagine among this character, in order for us to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, have at least, have you, do you have one? Do you have that persistence? Do you have that consistency? In life. So how are you? How are you today as follower of Christ? When we say follower of Christ, the one who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you are considered as a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I will tell you a story, my own reflection. When we were in Tagaytay, namit namin doon sila Rowan. When we were in Tagaytay, I, I felt ashamed of myself. I felt ashamed of myself because of the two scenarios, two different scenarios, in which I felt myself as being unfair, the way I dealt with different people. So I felt ashamed. So hold on, hold on. Let me tell the story. But before that story, I was trying to reflect, what is our real motivations in doing the ministry or in serving the ministry? Now in the Acts ministry, I'm sure you are all aware, um, I'm leading the Acts ministry and the program of the Acts Ministry is to make sure to serve in the community, outside the church. We are doing the volunteer work in the community because we want to reflect the love of God through our giving, through our volunteer work. It's about the love of Christ. That's why we have this theme in the Acts Ministry, Love in Action. Yun ang theme natin. If you are aware, Acts Ministry, Love in Action, we want to make sure that we share the love of God. The very purpose of doing volunteer work, either cleaning the beach or giving goods to uh, the community, our purpose is to make sure we, we share the love of Christ. But on the other hand, as I reflect, what's our real motivation? On the other hand, those who participated in the Acts ministry, have you ever felt the good feeling inside? There's a good feeling, di ba? Ang sarap ng pakiramdam. I was trying to reflect. Now, as I reflect, <clears throat> doing the ministry in Acts, what is my real motivation? To reflect the love of God or to achieve this good feeling inside? Wow, na, nakapagsilbi naman ako sa other people. So what's our motivation in a different ministry that we are doing? What is our real motivation in serving in the ministry that we have? 
Now, this is my story. Why I say I feel guilty doing such scenarios. The first scenario, when we went back home, we arranged dinner with my long friends. They are elementary and high school friends. So we get together. I treated them at Pamahaw. And then we, we order a lot. I would say, oh, we're so happy. And then we order a lot. Then when I buy it, I would say, it's, it's kind of huge, decent amount of money. I'm so grateful. I'm so happy. Well, I on. They deserve to be treated. Minsan lang kami magkita. Kasama namin yung mga family namin. And we're so happy with the decent amount of money. Now, the following day, this is the next scenario. The following day, while uh, we were at Dahon, someone of my batchmate texted me to say, Hey, Pastor, we are in Pamaha. We want to see you. So that evening from Dahon to Pamaha, we drove at the back route dun sa, sa Tagaytay. Para hindi kayo may traffic, maraming back route dun sa Tagaytay. Along the way, while we were driving, going to Pamaha, we've encountered this tindera selling pineapple. It's so good. No nakita ko siya, I stopped. I said to the tindera, how much, how much your pineapple? Sabi niya, 150 for three pineapples. So I looked to my pocket, I only have 200 bucks, 200 pesos. So I tried to negotiate dun sa tindera. I said, can I buy 100 for three pineapples? I have 200. You give me six. That's a good negotiation, di ba? <laughs> you know what? That in there, I look at me in the eyes with a sad face. She said, yes. Dapat matuwa ako. Dapat, us, ang sarap, nakatawad ako, di ba? Dapat, ganun yung feeling ko. I don't know why. Pero it hurts me inside, no? Nakatawad ako. Sabi ko. Parang it's so unfair. When I get back to the car, we drove, I told Irene, I'm so unfair. Why is it, <clears throat> trying to reflect, why am I not so consistent in sharing the love of God? Why this an amount of money? I'm so pleased with my friends. They deserve to, don't get me wrong. They deserve to be treated. With the decent amount of money, di ako nagre-reklamo. Just for 50 pesos, hindi ko pa naibigay. I said, what's happening? You can see that the woman was the farmer. It's the area. Kasi doon sa likod niya, andun yung plantation ng pineapple. Madumi yung damit, even the hands. I supposed to give 200 or 3 pineapples. But in a way, I felt the guilt because of the look. Sabi ko, why? Not so consistent in sharing the love of God at all times, at all costs. When I heard the uh, sharing of Sister Nina, that the fear of the Lord is about worshiping God at all times and at all costs, what does it really mean to serve God at all times, at all costs? Sabi ko sa sarili ko, am I following Christ at all times, at all costs? Did I, that particular moment, did I reflect the love of God to that tindera? Hindi naman ako nag, o nag-rub, o hindi naman ako nagkagawa ng mali. I just felt the guilt deep inside that I'm supposed to give thanks because of the good pineapple na pinaghirapan niya yun eh. But that moment, I think I miss it. I'm, I, I totally miss it. So I said to myself, am I following Christ to reflect His love inside and outside the church at all times and at all costs? We're following Christ only when it is convenient. When you feel convenient, okay, I will follow Christ. I'll follow Christ when we have time. We give spare time in serving God. We follow Christ when we are not busy. We follow God when we are not tired. So I said, is that the way to follow Christ? Is that a priority? Is that the devotion? Is that the consistency that we're looking at when we say we want to follow Christ? Or try to reflect. Am I following Christ because it gives me a good feeling inside? So what is our motivation in serving God? What does it really mean 
to worship God at all times, at all costs. Our conversation today is so beautiful in the book of Luke, chapter 9. Because the Lord Jesus Christ, here in the scenario, we will be able to understand how the follower, how the believer behave the way they understood of following the Lord Jesus Christ. And in that moment, the Lord Jesus Christ teach them, teach them how to really follow Him in order for them to fit for the kingdom. So that's what we are going to learn today. And if you are taking notes, the title of our conversation today is Over Everything Else. My prayer is this, that after this conversation, you will be able, all of us will be able to grasp what is the real meaning of following the Lord Jesus Christ over everything else. That's our conversations. I hope that we're able to understand I follow Christ over everything else. Now, if there's one principle that I want you to take home is this. To follow Christ is to place all things behind us. I'm sure all of us have different kinds of priority in life. My priority could be different to your priority. Your priority could be different to others. We, ha we all have different personal priority in life. Some probably the priority in life is family. I'm sure some of us, the priority in life is making a good family or building a good family. Some priority are career, being successful in the career. That's, that's your personal priority, diba? To be successful in your career. Some doing business. Some probably health. Others maybe a different kind of priority in life. It's okay to have a different kinds of priority in life, all of us. But when I say here to place all things behind us, it simply means that whatever priority in life that we have, we thought this is our priority, when it comes to level of significance, when it comes to level of priority, our number one priority should be to follow Christ. And then our personal priority becomes secondary. Therefore, our focus, our energy, and all our work is, to, is all about the Lord Jesus Christ. And then let God take care of our priority. And that's what is His promise in Matthew 6. Seek first the kingdom of God. And all of these things, our priority, will be given up to you. So I hope that you really grasp the meaning of to follow Christ should be our topmost priority. And then let this personal matter as our priority become secondary. Is following Christ our top priority in life? Ask yourself. I do hope that after these conversations, our heart will change and will pursue to follow Christ as our number one priority in life. And this is what we're going to learn in the book of Luke. Now, let me just give you the background of the book of Luke. Apostle Luke, who is the writer of this gospel, broadly, he managed to organize his writing in terms of geographical significance, the movements of the Lord Jesus Christ from Galilee towards Jerusalem and in Jerusalem. So it's so nice. Pag binasa niyo po yung chapter ng buong Luke, you will, you will be able to understand this. And also, we able to understand last week, the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ grew. He fed the multitude in verse 13 and verse 17. Now, the critical conversations towards the disciples and those who are following Him happened in chapter 9. And this is where we deep dive in our conversation today. The Lord Jesus Christ asked the disciple, who do the crowds say I am? Because the Lord Jesus Christ wants to really Make sure that those who are following Him understand the meaning of discipleship, the meaning of following Him. So many among those believers, it says, Ah, oh, you are uh, John the Baptist. You are Elijah. And then Peter says, You are Christ of God. Then that is the crucial moment. That is the key moment in that conversation because the disciples or those who are following the Lord Jesus Christ that moment, they able to understand the cost of following Jesus. 
I hope that you are here in our conversations and then you will be able to understand what is the true cause of following the Lord Jesus Christ. In that conversation before our text, the Lord Jesus Christ reminded those who believe in Him that following Him or the truth, the truth about discipleship is about self-denial. It's about suffering. And it's about submission. Earlier in verse 23, the Lord Jesus Christ mentioned that if you want to follow me, you must deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. That's, that's how the Lord Jesus Christ is transitioning the disciples to really understand what does it mean to follow him. Because that time they were full of suffering. They are being rejected in the community. And now the Lord Jesus Christ is preparing the disciples. And he said this, Following the Lord Jesus Christ is both difficult and costly. Even today, mga kapatid, I'm sure all of us will be able to prepare ourselves the very reason or what should we do in order for us to really able to follow the Lord Jesus Christ even when we encounter difficulty, even if it is costly. And that is where we transition in our conversation today. Now, along the way, the Lord Jesus Christ was talking not only among the 12 disciples, but also those who, is, who, are, who are following Him. Now, in verse 57, this is where we start in our conversation. Verse 57 says here, As they were going along the road, someone said to Him, I will follow you wherever you go. Wow. <laughs> when I was trying to reflect in this text, I said, wow, this, this believer is so bold in his expression of following the Lord Jesus Christ. As if, Lord, kung saan ka man pupunta, sama ako sayo. My own personal reflections. I hope that this follower was not really expressing his emotion during the spur of the moment. In that instance lang. No? Naranasan nyo na ba yun? Because you have heard someone who is so eloquent in speaking and then when he tried to invite in certain training or activity or event and then along the way you raise your hand and then in that moment as you go on with training you found yourself under the sun why am i here why am i here it's just a spur of the moment no i do hope that this follower of the lord jesus christ express himself truly from the heart that i will follow you wherever you go now let's look the respond of the Lord Jesus Christ. He says here, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nets, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay His hands. I was trying to imagine why the Lord Jesus Christ mentioned this. Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nets. Why? Actually, the Lord Jesus Christ is so aware that during that moment, while he is introducing himself and teaching the disciples, many will exert opinion or assertions of following the Lord Jesus Christ that moment. And he wants to make sure, the Lord Jesus Christ wants to make sure that those people surrounding him will be able to understand the true meaning of following him. That's why the Lord Jesus Christ says here, I have no place to go. That is the key thing here. The Lord Jesus Christ is telling, it will be difficult, my friend. It is costly. How are we, the way we're following the Lord Jesus Christ today? Akapagod, Pastor? Medyo rest mo na ako? Is that the way to follow the Lord Jesus Christ? Encountering difficulty, back out na? To another, he said, follow me. This is the only time the Lord Jesus Christ invited those who believe in Him, to follow Him aside from the 12 disciples. Look what happened next. But, the but here is so conditional, meaning there is certain condition need to be met for the person to agree and to follow Him. He says here, but He said, let me first go and bury my father. So it's a conditional thing. Yes, Lord, I will follow, but... Let me first. That is, this, that is the situation here whenever we are invited in the ministry. 
Okay, pastor. Pero, yung pero natin, ano. Pero, uh, busy pa ako sa work, eh. Maybe two weeks after, pastor, I think I'm, I, will be, I will be ready, you know? What is our but? What is our but? Look at the answer of the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is where we're going to learn the true meaning of discipleship. Now, the Lord Jesus Christ answered you, Leave the dead to bury their own dead. But as for you, as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Wow. When I was trying to reflect, did the Lord Jesus Christ really mean to let the dead bury their own dead? How it will happen? No, no. Don't take it so literal. It's a metaphor, actually. What the Lord Jesus Christ is trying to make an emphasis here is that it's the issue between the personal sentiments and the religious duties. Which one is more important? Our personal thing or to follow the Lord Jesus Christ? The Lord Jesus Christ says here, I hope that you understand the true meaning of following me. Go and proclaim the gospel. This simply means our personal priorities in life become secondary because following Him should be over everything else. Anything that we are doing in our personal matter, our priority in life today is to follow Christ, is to serve Christ. That is our focus. That's the number one priority that we should have in this life today. For we know God will take care of our priorities. In 6 to 1, and another said, I will follow you, but let me say farewell to those at home. Again, this is very similar to the first one who said yes, but let me, let me do this thing, Lord. Now I'll give you our different buts, our conditions, the way we follow the Lord Jesus Christ today. I think. I believe this is our but, this is our conditions before we actually follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Try to imagine if the Lord Jesus Christ is asking you, follow me. I hope there is no but. I hope there, you will not be able to see these words in your listing. First one, Pastor, hindi pa ako ready. There will be time, I'm sure, darating ang time that I will be ready in the ministry. But not today, Pastor. Not today. No? What is our but in serving in, in, in the ministry of God? I mentioned it early. There will be time for it. Or probably you have said this. I've been in the ministry for a long time. Siguro tapos na ako dyan. Ayan muna natin yung mga bata naman. No? Tapos na ako dyan. You know, I, I was so pleased when, when the father of Irene was serving in the ministry at the age of more than 70. 75 actually. Uh, or more. And then he said, I was, I, actually, someone asked, Pastor, hindi ka pa ba magre-retire? Sabi niya, wala naman nagre-retire in, in serving God. So long as you are capable, so long as the people want you, so long as the Lord says that you still, I still need you in the ministry. Don't get tired in serving the Lord Jesus Christ. When someone invited you to go full-time, may anak pa ako here. We all focus on our personal priority in life. I think it's time for us to really trust and focus on following the Lord Jesus Christ. And I let this become secondary. Let God take care of our priorities in life. I've been in the ministry for a long time. So, guru, rest muna, no? Well, it's a sad thing. Kung if you really want to rest, what was... We're, we're doing before in the ministry if we opted to rest this time. Why we are not so motivated in expressing the love of God at all times, at all costs. Why we have to rest? You know, one time I, I had the privilege to ask Pastor Bucho when he was flying a lot of times traveling to a different regions in different countries. And I said to him, Pastor, hindi ka ba napapagod? And he says, no. The love, his love towards Christ motivates him to do so. I hope that's the kind of attitude 
the way we follow the Lord Jesus Christ. We are, we should be motivated all the way in our ministry. There's no such thing as old na in the ministry. We can still share the Lord Jesus Christ telling to the disciples, but for you go and proclaim the gospel. I think we should go. We should go. And I've heard it to the youth. Youth, I need to be better muna to be part in the ministry. You know, when we were invited in the pastoral ministry, we were not equipped. <laughs> we don't know what is the level of betterment for you to say, I'm ready. No. Just say yes and be ready. And equip yourself at the same time. Don't say, I need to be better muna. Probably you said, no, Pastor, wag muna ngayon this year. I just got promoted. I will be busy in my work. What is our priority then in our service to God? Or probably mention this. I've said yes. It's an obligatory yes. The pastor says, I'll do the ministry one to five, and then you're serving in the ministry. Perfunctory lang. He just said yes. Of course, serving our God, it should be fearful. Nakakatakot yan. And be blessed kapag natatakot kayo because you become dependent in the power of the Holy Spirit. Don't be dependent in your own skills. Mas matakot kayo kapag dependent kayo sa sarili nyo. No? I'm so afraid standing here. <laughs> it's only by the grace of God that we can share. And also, <clears throat> we're doing this. But where's the heart? When we are doing in the ministry, when we are doing service in the ministry, I hope that you will give you all your heart. Makikita sa action natin yan, the way we serve. Oh, ito na po yung ano mo, pamplet mo, ito po yung tubig. Doon po kayo maupo. No? Where's the heart? Where's the heart? What is our but? Mga kapatid, it's time for this year, 2024, to really understand the way we should follow the Lord Jesus Christ. In verse 62, let us continue. Jesus said to him, No one who puts his hand to the plow looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. Wow. I said, that is what we look forward to. The way we serve, the way we follow the Lord Jesus Christ so that we too should fit for the kingdom of God. When we accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, yes, yes, we are accepted in heaven. But are we worthy? Are we fit for the kingdom of God in the way we live our Christianity today, in the way we live our faith today? I think this is time for us to really serve in the ministry wholeheartedly. When we say no one here, this means that all of us should always be ready to hold our plow, ready in the ministry every time. When we say no one, no one like the farmer, no one who starts digging, stop. No one who is serving in the ministry and eventually stop. No one should do that. No one who get their hands dirty at the work for the kingdom, clean it up and retire. No one should do that. No one who is going at the right direction in our walk of faith. Go you turn. But rather, all of us, all of us should keep holding our plow. I think this time, this year, this is the time to hold our plow and keep on in the ministry. We should keep the fire in our heart. Don't get tired in, in the ministry. Keep that fire burning. All of us should work hard in serving God. All of us should know the rigorous demands and commitment it requires to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. All of us should serve God for God's purpose. That's what we're doing. Why? Why we have to do all of these things? Because all of us to fit for the kingdom of God. That is what we want to achieve. We are passers-by in this world. Don't accumulate wealth so much here. But be ready. Make yourself fit for the kingdom. Make yourself be worthy for the kingdom of God. That's the reason why we are serving wholeheartedly at all times, at all costs. Because the true follower of Christ makes all things, personal things, secondary. And to serve God is the most important thing 
because we want to hear too. In a perfect time, I go and faithful servant. Amusta po tayo. I hope and I pray that we're able to grasp and understand the true meaning of following the Lord Jesus Christ. Whatever personal things we have as our priority become secondary in terms of significance. But to follow Christ, to give Him thanks, to serve Him is the number one priority in our life. So my challenge to everyone is this. Keep our hands on the plow. Mga kapatid, if you are already in the ministry, continue to serve God. And those who are not yet, do not wait for someone to tap you on the shoulder to say, we need you in the ministry. Make yourself available. I do hope we really understand the true meaning of following the Lord Jesus Christ. So let's keep on. Keep on serving the Lord Jesus Christ. Keep on doing service so that all of us, all of us will fit for the kingdom of God.